Whoa! <laughs> Beautiful. Hi, and welcome to the Orvis Guide to Fly Fishing. I'm your host, Tom Rosenbauer. And in this episode, we're gonna to begin to explore the world of moving water. Current helps bring your flies to the fish, but it also introduces some special problems and challenges. Uh, it's a dynamic and fun environment, and I think you'll enjoy the show. Oh, yeah, nice fish! That fish has already refused that fly. You're gonna have to try just a slightly different pattern. The roll cast pickup is a great cast to use in a lot of fishing situations. This is a beautiful wild trout from a small stream. Just a gorgeous little fish. I say hit that bank. Let's go to that grass bed. The Orvis Guide to Fly Fishing is supported by Orvis Fly Fishing. Algoma Country. Destination Ontario. Main Office of Tourism. Yellowstone Teton Territory. Crazy Rainbow Ranch. Bahamas Tourism. Adipose Boat Works. Global Rescue. Trout Unlimited. Rivers and streams have a special allure for fly fishers. They're where many of our favorite fly rod fish live, but they're also special because they are beautiful and natural. They also represent some unique challenges for anglers. Some basic understanding of water dynamics and how fish live in streams and rivers will help make you a better fly fisher. When you move from still water to moving water, it does introduce some complexities and you need to learn how to manipulate your line so that your fly looks natural or looks the way you want it to look. Current is both your friend and your enemy in moving water. It brings your fly to the fish, but many times the line and leader, once grabbed by the current, conspire to make your fly look unnatural. In order to communicate when we learn about fishing in a current, First, let's get some basic terminology in your vocabulary. Casting upstream means to cast right into the current. You gather line as it comes back to you. This gives your fly a natural drift, but it puts a fly line on top of the fish, which sometimes scares them. Quartering upstream is somewhere between straight upstream and straight across the current. It's a good compromise between getting a natural drift and keeping your fly line off to one side of the fish. A cross stream is when you cast 90 degrees to the current flow, and this kind of presentation presents special challenges, as we'll see later on. The fly begins to swing or drag almost immediately after the line hits the water. Quartering downstream is between a cross stream and directly downstream. It's often used to swing a fly over salmon, steelhead, and trout, and you can cover a lot of water with this method. Downstream is just that, directly downstream. It isn't used much because a fly doesn't swing across the current and the fly drags unnaturally as soon as it hits the water. So what I'm doing is starting here with a straight upstream cast. I am facing right against the current. The current is coming right at me. If you don't strip fast enough, that slack builds up under your rod tip and you lose control. Not only can't you strike, but you can actually develop drag as that belly develops below your rod tip. So when you cast straight upstream, you just gather the line as it's coming back to you, just as fast as the current is bringing it to you. That way, that fly is moving perfectly with the current, just like a natural object. Now, if you take this cast and turn it 45 degrees, that's called quartering upstream. You have an advantage here in that it just puts the fly in a little bit of the leader over the fish and doesn't put all your fly line over the fish. So this is quartering upstream. And there, usually, you can also strip line to keep up with it, 
but the line will start to belly and then you may have to do a little mend or something to keep the line in place. Quartering upstream is a great way to avoid drag, which is an unnatural movement of the fly, and it can be used with any kind of fly, dry, nymph, or even a streamer. It's probably the most common way of fishing for trout in a stream, and it works in slow or fast water. It's a pig. Now watch what happens when I cast directly across stream. See what's happening behind me? When I cast directly across stream, that line bellies almost immediately, pulls the fly along with it, and causes what we call drag. Sometimes you want it when you're fishing a, a steelhead fly or a salmon fly or a streamer or a wet fly, but when you're fishing a dry fly or a nymph, you don't want any drag at all on it. So you have to do something to avoid getting that drag, and there are a couple ways to do it. One way to do it is what's called a mend. And people get really confused about mending, and I think it's because it's so easy. They, can't, they, they think it has to be more complicated than it is. But this is a mend. I make a cast, and with a stiff arm, I just flip my line upstream. That's all you do. That's a mend. Mends can be used to eliminate drag or to control the speed of a fly swinging in the current. I really like the way my friend Montana guide Molly Seminick explains it. Tell me about how you teach people how to mend. What do you, what do you tell them when you get, first get them out here on the water? When people ask me about mending, the first thing I want them to try to do is play around with a rod more and make circles with the line and lift it and, and get comfortable with moving it around because we, we're often too careful. And the way to mend is to lift the line off the water and break that line water tension. Take your rod tip and direct it any way you want and just use the tip and just fling it. And so the step one, break the tension. Step two, direct the line whichever way you want it to go. And have fun with it and play with it and use the rod and don't worry about making mistakes because first you have to get the feel of mending. When you cast at any angle other than directly upstream or directly downstream, you get what's called swing, where the fly swings across currents instead of in the same direction as the currents. Quartering downstream is the traditional way to get a fly to swing. As the fly swings, you want to control its speed by choosing the current you cast across, by mending the line, or by changing the angle at which you cast in relation to the current. In trout fishing, you can swing a wet fly, nymph, or streamer in any kind of water, from fast riffles to slow pools. Typically, you follow the fly with the rod tip as the fly swings through the pool. This imitates an emerging insect or perhaps a tiny minnow swimming across the current. Fish often take just as the fly completes its swing and begins to straighten below you. At the end of the swing, you can also strip the fly in a few feet, which may also induce a strike. In Atlantic salmon and steelhead fishing, the traditional way to fish for them is quartering downstream, and strikes almost always come toward the end of the swing. It's important to vary your swing speed with casting angles and mends for all species. Too slow, and the fish lose their interest, too fast, and they seem reluctant to chase the fly. Catching a nice trout, steelhead, or salmon on a swing fly is one of the greatest pleasures in fly fishing. Downstream is when you cast in the same direction the current is moving and the line goes tight immediately. You don't use a direct downstream cast very often, but when you do, it's often important to throw some slack into your presentation and even reach as the fly drifts down in the current. So there are many ways to manipulate your line in the current to get a fish to take your fly. Sometimes you need a full combination of the right casting angle plus multiple mends in the same drift. No matter what kind of fly fishing you do, always experiment with different presentations before changing flies. What kind of presentation will the fish prefer today? Well, that's something only trial and error, experience, or the advice of a good guide can tell you. There are no magic bullets, but when you crack the code, it's a wonderful feeling. Next, we'll look at some other ways to get a natural drift. Although we often use drag when fishing a swung wet fly or a streamer, most times you want to avoid it. 
especially when fishing dry flies and nymphs. Trout mainly eat helpless insects drifting in the current, and only a few types are strong swimmers. And drag is not always as obvious to us 40 feet away as it is to a trout just inches from a drifting fly. Drag can be quite subtle, but if you know you're fishing over trout, and you have the right fly pattern because you caught fish on that fly earlier, and you don't get any strikes, then you should suspect drag. And just as often, when you cast a dry fly to a trout and the trout splashes at the fly, but seems to miss it, drag is probably the culprit. Trout are pretty good at catching what they go after, and that splashy refusal is probably just a trout putting on the brakes at the last minute and not really opening its mouth. Men's don't always work that well because they sometimes move the fly and you don't always want a fly to move. Another way to reduce drag is called a reach cast, which is really nothing more than an aerial mend. Here we have a perfect setup for what's called a reach cast. We need a reach cast here. We've got fast water between us and the fish, slower water over there. The minute the fly line hits the water, the fly's gonna drag. It's gonna pull the fly downstream and the fish aren't gonna take it. So what we're gonna do is in here is a reach cast to throw a loop of line upstream. We're gonna get the fine points on the reach cast from Pete, our casting instructor, a bit later on. But for now, I just wanna show you how it's one thing in your bag of tricks to avoid drag. If you're trying to cast across conflicting currents like you have over there, it's always better, if you can, to wait as close as you can to get as close to the current that you're fishing into as you can. I could cast all the way across to that slower current below that island, but I'm going to have an awful time. My line's going to be twirling all over the place and I'm never going to be able to keep control of my fly. Maybe you can't cross the river. We have other things in our bag of tricks. With a longer fly rod, you can keep your rod high and try to keep most of the fly line off the conflicting currents. When casting across currents like I did up here behind this rock, it's always a good idea to keep that rod tip high because the current in the center of the river would have dragged my fly right out of there too quickly. If that doesn't work, you've still got other options. Every piece of water is like a fingerprint with unique current lanes and sometimes you have to try a number of different angles and presentations to get what we call a dead drift or drag free drift. And believe it or not, we have still not exhausted our bag of tricks. We're working up the bank and once we get past this point, the current's actually coming around the back eddy and going the other way. I'm gonna to have to throw a slack line cast. There's two ways to do it. One is to stop the rod high and just drop the rod, sort of a half parachute cast. The other way is to throw an S cast by wiggling your rod tip as, a, as the line comes forward. Another cast to try is a parachute cast, also known as the pile cast which I like to use in tricky spots like the tail of a pool where drag is always nasty. I'm gonna do what's called a parachute cast. Parachute cast, what you do is you aim your cast up into the sky and then you drop your rod like this. And what that does, it throws a bunch of slack into your line so that that slack has to pay out before the fly starts to drag. So here's how you do it. I'm false casting off to the side, the fish are over there, and now I'll aim high and drop my rod. That gives me some nice slack. You see how that slack has to straighten out? And that's gonna give me a drag-free drift. So aim high and then drop. Your leader can also be modified to reduce drag. Instead of using the typical two feet of tippet material, tie on a new tippet that is four to six feet long. The tippet will land in loose coils, which will also help you avoid drag. You can use all of these tricks to avoid drag no matter what kind of fly you're using, streamer, dry, or nymph. Men's aren't usually as effective with a dry fly because they almost always move the fly, but they can be effective with nymphs in faster water or with a streamer to slow down its swing. Now let's get some solid tips on making slack line casts from a fly casting expert, Pete Kutzer. 
So when we're casting, we have to get that dry fly to drift as naturally as possible. And that's a dead drift presentation or a natural presentation. And there's a series of different casts we can do. And these are called slack line casts. They all have a lot of different names, but don't get confused by it. It's just a variation of the basic pick up and lay down cast. The first cast I'm gonna show you is a cast that some people call the pile cast, some people call a parachute cast, but it's a great cast when you're trying to make a downstream presentation. You want that fly to drift nice and naturally down to those fish below you. To do this parachute cast or pile cast, it's basically just a pick up and lay down cast with a high forward trajectory. You're then gonna pull that rod tip down, which is gonna cause that line to come back a little bit and pile up. That's gonna help you get that nice natural presentation as that fly drifts down the water. So we send it up, pull it down, and that gives you a nice downstream presentation. Now that fly will drift down nice and naturally to those fish. When you have to present your fly across the river, we have to put controlled slack in the line either by mending or by a cast called a reach cast. A reach cast is an aerial mend, if you will. We're bringing that rod to a stop, then sweeping it upstream or downstream to get that desired uh, controlled slack in our line. We want that fly to drift down as naturally as possible. When we do this reach cast, we have to allow a little bit of line to slide through our hands or slip a little line, so we keep our fly on target and it's very accurate. It's basically just a pick up and lay down cast with a little reach after that stop. We're gonna take that rod, pick it up and stop, then reach in a direction. That's gonna put an aerial mend in our cast and get that fly on target to those fish. So now you have some ways of avoiding drag when fishing in rivers and streams. Next, we'll talk about staying safe and getting the fish to the net in moving water. A lot of newcomers to fly fishing have problems setting the hook. There are many times when trout refuse a fly because they change their minds at the last minute, which is called a refusal, and looks like you missed a strike. There's nothing you can do in a case like that, but try again. You want to reach a happy medium when you strike a trout. You want to be quick. Trout won't keep the fly in their mouth very long. You don't want to jerk the rod way over your head. You don't want to lift up like this. It's only enough to tighten the line. So think of a strike to a trout as just picking up to make another cast. It's really just enough to make that fly move. So about that much. When you set the hook, don't forget to pinch the line against the rod with your fingers to keep the line tight. Make sure that you don't have a lot of slack in your line, otherwise you'll never be able to move the rod quick enough to set the hook. A trout can spit out a fly pretty quickly. When you do it just right, there's nothing like that feeling of a fish on the hook. Playing a fish in moving water introduces some special challenges. When it's a small fish, you can just strip in line as if you were retrieving line. But when you get a frisky fish in fast water, that's another story. It's always best to get downstream of a fish so that it has to fight against the current. Also, the hook will often pull out of a fish when it fights directly downstream of you. If you hook a big fish in fast water, the best thing to do, if you can, is to move to shore or shallow water where you can move quickly to get downstream of the fish and then put pressure on it so that the fish darts upstream. A fish will always move in the opposite direction from which pressure is applied. But you can also turn a fish's head to steer it where you want it to go because a fish can only swim in the direction its head is pointing. Once you get a fish close to you, use this idea to lead the fish to exactly where you want it to go. To net a fish, Lead it over the top of the net and then lift the net from under the fish. Never swipe at a fish with a net. That will usually make it bolt and you can break a fine tippet by swiping at a fish with a net. Dealing with current also means watching where you wade. Never move your weight from one foot to another until one foot has a firm placement. The best place to cross a large river is usually at the tail of a pool or at the head of a wide riffle, where the water is usually the most shallow. One important tip for wading safety is when you're crossing a wide piece of river like this, you're not sure of the bottom or the current, always angle yourself upstream when you're crossing. If for some reason you get to a point where you can't go any farther, you can always retrace your steps. If you angle downstream, you might get pushed into a hole 
and get yourself into big trouble. When crossing a difficult piece of water, make sure you stop and rest briefly if you get tired. Waiting is hard work, and I should have had a waiting staff here. When turning around in deep, fast water, always pivot in an upstream direction against the current because rotating while facing downstream can push you into a deep hole. When you're wading tricky water, it's always a good idea to have a wading staff. If you don't have a regular wading staff or you forgot yours, you could cut a stout piece of wood or grab a stout piece of wood from the bank or use a long-handled net. And what you want to do is shuffle along, keeping the wading staff downstream of you so you can lean against the wading staff. So you put it downstream, park it, and then you use that to support yourself. Always wear a wader belt in fast water. It'll keep water from getting into your waders, which will prevent your waders from becoming a sea anchor, pushing you downstream, and will add buoyancy because of the air trapped inside your waders. Whoa. It's all right. I just went for a swim. <laughs> and don't forget to wear the correct footwear. Felt soles, where they're legal, are very secure on slippery rocks, but they stay wet for a long time and harbor invasive species. Rubber soles are great for muddy banks and bottoms and for hiking long distances. And by adding carbide studs to the bottom of them, rubber soles can be made as secure as felt, even on slippery rocks. Be as careful in shallow water as you are in deep water. A spill in deep water will often just get you wet. A spill on streamside rocks, which are often very slippery, can break a bone. Never step where you can't see bottom and if you're fishing in the evening, into the dark, always know the water really well. You know, moving water always adds some excitement to fly fishing. And there's just something about the feel of moving water around your feet that makes you glad to be out here. The Orvis Guide to Fly Fishing is supported by Orvis Fly Fishing. Algoma Country. Destination Ontario. Main Office of Tourism. Yellowstone Teton Territory. Crazy Rainbow Ranch. Bahamas Tourism. Adipose Boat Works. Global Rescue. Trout Unlimited.